we do have a new league that did start up. And we do want to acknowledge it, man, because, like we said, man, these leagues, they come around. And they do have potential, some of them, because they give opportunities for guys to, number one, get competitive reps. Um, I think it was Harbaugh I actually just saw talking about that element when he was asked about the USFL. But it's one of those things, like I said, man, we don't have feeder leagues into the NFL. And some of these leagues have tried multiple times to stick around, man. And some of them or a lot of them have not had that type of success. But for the USFL, it's trying to spin the block and, you know, do something positive. And with that, man, I will say that the names of these players and some of the coaches that are in this uh, USFL, man, it is a little intriguing. I did get a chance to go in um watch some of their stuff because they had their opening weekend last weekend. So this would be week two coming up. It was pretty cool, man. Um, in terms of them being the second league to start up this year, because we had the XFL that started up in, was that April? No, the XFL started up in February. TG like, said the playoffs are coming up. Yeah, yeah. XFL playoffs are starting next week, I want to say. But their league started in April. And then obviously with the uh, USFL, they just started a week ago, man. But some of the names of the guys that are in here man that do have ties to the Steelers first off shout out to Todd Haley man the game I actually was watching was with Todd Haley he still got the juice on offense they couldn't stop anything but they got the juice he, he still know how to call calls so Todd Haley man he's the uh head coach of the Memphis Steamboats but obviously y'all know he was here with the killer beat era shout out to Haley but then from there, man, you got the Birmingham Stallions, Brian Allen. Shout out to B.A., man. Played corner here. Deion Kane came through here as a wide receiver. Dur uh, Derwin Gray, one of our first Maryland tackle draft picks, man. You know, when we first started that whole Maryland connection. I remember him. Yep. Jay Sternberger, one of the Titans that we had brought in here. Khalil Davis. We remember him. Shout out to Khalil, man. If I remember correctly, Khalil has a strong, he got a strong right hand or was it the left hand? I can't remember which one. He yeah, I can't remember if it was him or his brother. But yeah, but it was one. It was between Bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Davis guys. He had a yeah. little, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Khalil, man. Hopefully keeping his hands to him. So, but, you know, all love. Then for the Michigan Panthers, this is a two-timer for me. Rondell Carter came through for a little lightweight during uh, preseason. Uh, that was a year ago. But, you know, obviously, more importantly, he's my JMU Duke. So shout out to him for that. New Jersey Generals. This cat I played with for a little preseason here, Trey Williams, uh, running back return. Man, actually scored on a punt return here in 2015. No, 27. No, it was 17. Excuse me, 2017. Ran back a punt return for a touchdown in the preseason game here, man. Devon Askew Henry, shout out to this one. This is a pit connection. Paris Ford. I'm sure you recognize that name. I do. Absolutely. He was shitting on Pitt on uh, Twitter, actually. Serious? Yeah, he was like ripping on Narduzzi. He was like out what? of left field. It was out of nowhere. Why? It was. I don't know. Come on, Paris. I guess, yeah, maybe he has some bad blood I or something. I literally was like, yo, I get to talk about weird. a pit guy. Come on, it bro. Weird. Yeah. Paris, don't do that, Paris. Yeah, I don't think he has the best relationship <laughs> whoa, with Pitt right whoa, now. Paris, don't do that, Paris. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, I put the little asterisk behind it everything. You see it, Deke? I'm like, yo, it's the pit guy. You know what I mean? I was happy. Yeah, he was good. Yeah. Oh, he was good for us. Trust me. <laughs> he was. He like, was. He was I don't really know what's going on with right now. <laughs> yeah, um... Field goal kicker that came through here. He had one game with us, but he made all his field goals. Are you ready for this name? Nick Skiba. I don't know if you remember him. He, I do remember he, him. He gave us one game against the Ravens. This We actually ended up losing this game, but he was money on all his field goals. So shout out to Nick. And then the Pittsburgh Maulers. We do have Mark Gilbert. Y'all remember Mark, man, was one of our free agent uh, or undrafted free agent signings. Was that two years ago we brought Mark in? Yeah, he's out of Duke. Yeah, it was like two years ago, but we was, were really optimistic about two, him. You're man. right. He ended up uh, landing with the Dolphins, the, or not the Dolphins, the Lions. The Lions. Right? Yeah, yeah. His he was year, all right, though. And actually played for him, and I think yeah. the Lions ended up cutting him. Then he was back on Steelers practice for like a little year, bit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess he uh, signed with the Maulers. He's staying in Pittsburgh. Yeah, so he's with the Maulers. And then another notable name with the Pittsburgh Maulers, we just brought him up, was uh, Reuben Foster. I did want to include him. Because if he keeps playing the way that he played in week one, that could be an intriguing name to watch out for for us in terms of one of those late free agent post draft signing type dudes, man. So just like I said, just keep a name on the radar. But as a whole, man, I do like the fact that when you talk about these type of guys, man, all these names I named, they vary. Some of these guys are draft picks. Some of these guys are journeymen. Some of these guys have actually had, you know, a couple of seasons or two at the NFL level. But the big thing is this, man, it does give these guys an opportunity. And for us, it gives us another opportunity in terms of organizations, a chance to find out, man, 
is this guy just a practice squad guy or is this guy actually going to get a chance to develop into something? And the only way you can tell that is by watching them play real life football. You don't always get that in season if you're not a guy that dresses and gets on the football field. So I do like that part, but we'll obviously monitor it and see what they can do in terms of keeping it up, man, and stuff like that. Their games are different, though, in terms of broadcast. Obviously, we know with the XFL, that was all ESPN or Fox or excuse me, ESPN or FX, which is like. It was like FX ESPN. I don't even know how that broadcast works. But either way, that's all the uh, XFL stuff for the USFL. I think they're on like Fox Sports, FS1, stuff like that. So, you know, definitely tap in. But I did want to throw this one cool thing out because I am a WWE guy. I like my wrestling folks out there. For the uh, Michigan Panthers, (laughs) for every home game, they're going to have Big E. Y'all know Big E, WWE, New Day Rocks and all that stuff. He's going to be there like MC rocking the crowd and doing announcements and intros and stuff like that i'm trying to figure out how that's gonna look per se because typically you don't see that vibe at football games but apparently he's gonna be yeah walking around emceeing the crowd and stuff like that in stadium but obviously we know the big wwe connection with big e so like i said man that part was a little bit intriguing so like i said man a little update on them usfl folks